Oh, you would need to make a co-host. Okay. Make co-host sure. it and make it. So co-host. We'll is in... If you right-click on my name in the participant mm -hmm. window. Mm -hmm. One that was originally in Madison. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So you should be, are you okay now? Are you seeing on your screen? Yes. Okay. Ready? Okay, there we go. It's now 5.30, and I will call the meeting of the Finance Personnel Committee meeting to order on Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. May we have roll call, please, Lori. Crystal? Here. John? Here. Joe? Here. Todd? Not online? No. Okay. Then we have item number two, which is first period for public comment. Anybody in the audience would like to speak to us? Anybody online? Nope. All right. Then we'll get right to number three, which is discussion with possible action on the 2023 health insurance options. Well, um, we were able to meet with Exemplar that we had last week. Um, it was us plus a few other municipalities that are considering going to Exemplar. And the CEO of the company was actually the one that was on, on there. And it was the first part of it was more of a bio of what the company is and more on him. But when they finally got down to the nitty gritty um, of things or whatever, one of the things that why a lot of people hadn't heard of them before is that they didn't launch them, their company until 2019. And they were not in Wisconsin, they were out in other areas, they're based out in North Carolina. And the reason that they weren't in our area is because they had um, another company called National General that was in this area and they didn't have a, a no compete clause that was in there. Well, then this company was bought out by Allstate. And so then it kind of opened up and changed a lot of the different reasonings behind that. So they were able to come into our area. And they only work with certain, air, certain um, companies and Benefit Advisors is one of them that they have chosen um, to work with. So that's why we have not heard of them before. Um, they are back when I was asking about the, the stopgap and the insurance part of it, if, you know, with the level funded, that was a little bit nerve wracking on it. They're backed by Liberty Mutual Company as the insurance company for the stopgap stuff. So they have a lot of pools of funds to draw from. So that would be our um, protection per se. So they accept the risk on behalf of the municipalities. So they have a nationwide network. So um, one of the, the pros on that is that we are currently in a, we have to have an HMO or a PPO for our employees. And this one, they could go basically anywhere except for right now Winona Health, but they are working on trying to get Winona Health. Um, and basically they have said that if there is a provider that is not in network, that the employee can actually go with their and contact customer service, and then they will work to try and get that provider or their doctor or whatever in that work, if possible. And most of the time, they say they're haggling over like $50 when it comes to um, if they want to be in part of the network. So um, that was kind of nice to know. Um, I asked them several questions, but main, I'm going to go through a few of the pros, some of the cons, and I had a lot more pros than I did cons when it comes to them. The biggest one being the 22% reduction in rates, which is for both the city and for the employees. Courts, we did ask them to go back and sharpen their pencils. They came back with a 0% increase now versus the 5.5% increase, but then there was no other changes to it other than the 0% increase. So they still would not be providing us with the vision coverage that we currently have, but exemplar would be. Um, so another pro is the increase in network availability. So we would no longer need to have an HMO and a PPO. Everybody would be on the same um, percentage-wise. 
Um, they have their own pharmacy, so that's one way that they can keep some of the pharmacy rates for the co-pays down. They work with the local pharmacies, and they actually promote versus using the retail, um, like the Walgreens, the Walmart. If we had a local pharmacy, I know in Toma they have like a smaller drug store. They actually promote using them because they want to have the local revenue in the local community. So I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. Right. So they would probably promote, you know, yeah. So they would they would all be in network. So um, one thing that I thought was kind of um, a good thing that they did, and this is another reason that they were promoting themselves, but for me, seeing things like they have a contract actually with Medicare to do Medicare Advantage plans on behalf of the federal government, which the federal government doesn't do that with just anybody. So that made me feel much better that they are actually, you know, been rated by the federal government as a as a good a company to work with, especially with Medicare. You see all those things going out there. So they do they do work with the uh, with the CMS um, Medicare on on the Medicare Advantage Part D plans anyway. Um, they have, we would have online access to the claims, um, data, which is one of the things that's a major plus because the big things like courts, they never want to give us out our claims data so that we can kind of figure out if our rates are going to start skyrocketing or not. And we can kind of do that. So that is something that the employees not only would have, at, um, online access to their explanation of benefits right away because they can set up their own things, but the employer also would have that ability not to get down to the nitty gritty information on each employee, but they would actually be able to get the information for the group. So that was a was a big plus. Um, again, benefit advisors would take care of the transition for all the employees, so no, no paperwork would be involved for the, for the um, employees to have to fill out. What they would do is they'd take all of our current census and they would just um, give me the list to make sure I can verify that against what we currently have. So um, it would be a, a very uh, minimal uh, process for the employees. We would still have the open enrollment as we do um, currently. So anybody that is not on or whatever they, or if they wanted to change from whatever they're on, they can switch over. So they also have a telemed option and that has a zero copay. So that is another um, option. I did ask them about kind of like the mental health part because with WEA, we used to have mental health on that. And one of those is it's more of a pre-authorization. They don't necessarily have telemed for that, but they do have if it was medically necessary and, and pre-authorized, then they would they would cover that. It's just not necessarily on telemed. Say on that. So, um, and again, any pre-authorizations, just like with a lot of other companies, and we have that and currently. That if you were going to have it or know you're having surgery for something, it's always good to call them to get it pre-authorized ahead of time. And as long as your doctor says it's medically necessary, they don't they don't question it. That's what. This guy is saying, but he's not in the nitty gritty part of things either. So, um, again, if they're not, the doctor's not in network, they, you can call your member services and that's on the back of their cards that they can just call and say, hey, my doctor for this, that my regular doctor is saying I need to go to, but I don't see that they're in the, in the network. Is there a reason that they can't be? And then they will go behind the scenes and get that work done. And it usually takes maybe about a week to 10 days. So. Um, some of the cons um, of the things is that we currently have a deductible of a thousand and two thousand, and this would be a fifteen hundred to three thousand. So it's a little bit of an increase, but you're also getting a decrease in premium. So it's kind of a, a way to go one way and versus the not. So if you're not using it, there's also the twenty percent coinsurance added, and, and some of the copays are higher. But with working with the HRA, and I'm going to use the example that you gave me. Um, the maximum out of a pocket. So say a person has a hundred thousand dollar hospital bill. <laughs> Exemplar is going to pay ninety seven thousand dollars of that, and the maximum out of pocket when we use our HRA would be only fifteen hundred dollars to the employee. So on a hundred thousand dollar claim, they only have to pay fifteen hundred. Health reimbursement account. So we have basically we have a pot of money that once somebody has met half of their deductible, then the HRA picks up the other half. So for instance, the 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 $3,000 that's remaining after Exemplar would pay the $97,000. We're going to be going right into the HRA. And again, that's another con. They don't do that automatically, but they would probably work with us going forward. It's not something that's happening probably right away. But the $3,000 would be sent into the HRA. 
and then they would cover 500 out of the deductible and 1,000 of the coinsurance, so that would only leave that 1,500 or half of that amount out of pocket that the employee would have to pay. So I think that that's a fairly win-win situation. So um, one other I thought is a con, but this is kind of all the way across the board. They don't release new rates for the following year up until 90 days prior to the renewal. So we like to get them earlier, but it's looking like October is probably the earliest they could give us in August, but they're not going to say, yeah, these are the final rates because that last quarter people could go in and have higher things that come through. So And currently we got our rates on September 29th. Right. And so if they're talking October 1 versus, you know, like I, it, it seems to me that no insurance company or carrier is going to release their rates earlier than September 29th or August, October 1st. And so, like I said, we're just going to be at the mercy of trying to... But with having the online access to our claims, right. we could probably get an idea what, what we might be coming in on. I asked them again about whether they would guarantee a rate for more than one year, and they say it was a roundabout answer, but the answer was really no, because... If they were to guarantee more than one year, they would probably inflate the rates, which would actually hurt us if we really wanted to look at claims data, because if we have a really good group and a really good year, they want to keep your, your business for more than just the one or two years. So they're going to try and move that risk out so that keeps them at lower rates. So if they, if they were to guarantee a rate for two years, they're going to balloon that up to cover that risk. Do so, they give you any idea historically what their rate increases have been like over the past? It's kind of hard to, because everybody's little is a little bit different. Okay. I know Jerry had at one time said it was single digits, but again, Nate said, well, a, a 2% versus 9% is uh, is a lot yeah. different. So I don't know if okay. I can probably, with them being so new and, and without having a lot of our claims data to kind of back that up, I don't know if we could actually get an answer on that before we have to make this decision. but. Um, so I personally feel um, very comfortable now after knowing that they're working with Liberty Mutual as the, the backup insurance company on this. Um, the questions that I've had from the employees, I think I've been able to answer. I, don't, I haven't heard anything that's a negative on anything, and I don't know if any of the other department heads have had any other things that have come up that I haven't been able to answer for you guys. So. My personal opinion is that I would recommend that we switch over to exemplar not only for the savings but for the additional benefits on being able to have a bigger network to, to draw from. And like I said, I saw more pros than cons, even though it seems too good, good to be true. But I think the, the CEO has basically said he's trying to eliminate a lot of the, the fluff of health insurance. I mean, he even says he's written a book. So, I might have to get the book and read it and see if that fluff is actually, you know. Put it under your pillow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's on my to-do list, but not, not before this. So. <laughs> so unless you guys have any questions, that's my, my spiel. Do our people on Zoom have any questions? Uh, it's, it, unless it's Todd. Well, that's um, what I was going to say. So I don't know if Annette is our employee, Annette, or if Annette is, do you know what? Well, we would be looking for anybody, like the only person who's not here to talk would be Todd. Would be yeah, Todd. All right, but I guess it says Annette's iPhone, but I don't know if that's... Wouldn't like, be Todd. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted okay. to <laughs> clarify. So then do you need, you need action from us then tonight, right? What did I have on here? Uh, review and approve, or yeah, discussion of possible action. So I kind of, in order for me to move forward on an open enrollment and things like that, I kind of wanted to see if this was the way you wanted to go so I can start planning for employee meetings because they would meet with the employees. They'd have a packet. They'd actually get their insurance cards, all that stuff with that. So I can move forward with Jerry getting that. Well, we we uh, go with exemplar. Is that what we said? Yes. I'll second that. Okay. A motion and a second, and can we do a voice or a, a just a voice vote? Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Motion carries. And thank you for all your work you're yeah, doing on you. that. By the way, that's you make it easier to understand for us. That's good. <laughs>
Item number four is review and approval of the 2023 administrative budget. I bet that's nice. Yeah, so this was sent out as part of the uh, packet. Uh, it's on screen now. Sarah, you're getting it on that side as well on Zoom? Yes. Um, so, I, you know, I, I did try to make sure that all of the um, changes, the major changes, uh, had explanations next to them, so you'll see that in the notes section. I'll just kind of come over a little bit because the GL numbers aren't probably as important. Um, and, and I will do a little bit different. I'll, well, I didn't. Uh, I'll have to go to the next page. So on the administrative side, big picture here, you can see in the um, kind of the totals of, uh, of per category. The biggest thing we're seeing increases, like most departments, is in the wage category. Benefits are going down, and again, this budget proposal includes numbers as if we were moving to exemplar. So this is with that reduction in health insurance costs. Um, the other things you'll notice in here is that contract for services are going up, as well as the cost for capital projects. And I'll get up that I'll uh, get to that in a second. And then finally, um, you'll you're seeing some changes here in the other miscellaneous insurance, maintenance, and things like that. And there's just a variety of reasons. So quite a bit of action within the budget overall, but a lot of it is just stuff moving around. So in terms of wages, we'll start there. Council wages and mayor wages. Um, year after year, my budgeting has just been off and I, uh, Lori and I looked at it again this year, um, used the CPI index. Uh, Lori helped me with some projections on number of meetings, how often per month and so on and so forth like that. And so you'll see a, a generally a large increase. More of that is to do with I would say additional meetings than the cost of living index increases. And so you'll see between the council wages and the mayor wages, you're close to that $8,000 mark um, between all that. Uh, legal wages, professional services, uh, talked uh, with our folks on that side and they're content with where they're at right now. Legal professional wages or professional services, it's hard to tell from year to year. Um, I don't anticipate uh, usually that $5,000 number is enough to cover us. Administrator wages, um, one thing I'll note here is that this one is set at a 2% increase. I did talk to the budget team, and um, one of the things that I had just thrown out there is that um, instead of doing a 3%, if I do a 2% increase, I would just like the option to uh, work remotely on Fridays if I can. Um, most of my weeks are really front-loaded. Um, so usually by the time I hit Fridays, I have 37 hours, 38 hours. And if I have the option just to work those last two hours remotely instead of coming into work, that would be great. Um, if there's stuff I need to be here for, I have no problem being here for. And I typically prefer working in the office. So that was kind of the deal that was brokered there. Um, Administrative projects, comprehensive plan for $45,000 is back on the menu. Um, the website, even though it wasn't done this year, was on the budget for 2022. It's not on the budget for 2023, mostly because I would recommend to this group that if we are going to are when we do the website, I would recommend the use of ARPA funds. Um, it's a clear cut use of ARPA funds to redo a website, to provide uh, additional accessibility and things of that sort. So rather than budget for again, we had that essentially cash on hand. And typically when we use that cash on hand, we don't have a, a revenue line showing that we're getting revenue from ourselves. So that's essentially going to uh, cash project of some sort. So, um, and the $45,000, one thing I will note is that we haven't quite decided on the whole community heart and soul versus mm -hmm. do we just go right to a, um, a firm to help us get right into the comprehensive plan and do it instead of doing the community heart and soul, which is kind of a precursor sort of work. So that's something that council may have to um, bat around a little bit once we get into the new year. But for now, having $45,000 in the budget is going to cover us either way. Okay. I got some good information at the conference about people who might be able to do that the smart way. Perfect. Clerk wages, we have at 6%. That was an adjustment increase based on external comparables. So we looked at um, 
all of our favorite communities that are comparable to us, Dodgeville, Prairie du Chien, uh, Fenimore, places like that. And uh, I'm strong believe that a 6% is a appropriate increase to kind of get our clerk more in line with where her contemporaries are across the region. 3% for a deputy. And then as we go down, um, you'll see some of these changes. Election other. Um, Lori had indicated that uh, it would be worthwhile to increase the budget for elections because election workers are harder to get at these days, and right now they're making minimum wage. So if we can uh, spend some money there to, in, to show appreciation for the folks who are still coming out to make sure that democracy runs, um, we felt that was a, a worthwhile cause. Other than that, you'll see a lot of like these other categories uh, come through. Workers' comp is down because some of our um, high claims are now past the point of mattering to the mod. Um, they're just not being counted against us anymore is another way to say it. Um, government training and travel, I'll point this out. You know, We did have a conversation about the, the diversity, equity, inclusion amount. Unfortunately, the proposal I got from the group that we had been engaged with at SRS did not come back with really anything fundamentally different from what I asked. And what I asked for was something at a lower price point that wasn't $35,000. And they just didn't do that. Um, and so the budget team made kind of a conscious decision that while we're not prepared to do a whole big project with an external um, consulting group, we would like to have additional money in the government training and travel budget to, to pursue some, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion training and possible some, some consulting. That's how we approached it, that for this year. Um, as you can see, some of our other services, accounting is going up just because we're getting tons of grants, a lot of single audits. General contractual services um, is going up because we just have a, a bigger city hall that just takes more energy and the heat and whatnot. Um, not to mention the fact that I am sort of hedging my bets as to how quickly we'll be able to get out from under the old city hall. And to a certain degree, we have to continue to heat that building at a bare minimum. So that's why you're seeing, and then plus just utility costs in general, you've seen this and all the other department budgets are just going up. Um, let's see, publishing, printing, we just have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of... Um, the Republic hearing. Public on, hearing. I mean, that's when we have a long meeting is taking up a lot more space in the paper. I think we're keeping the paper going. <laughs> you think so? Um, here I wanted to point out that in the building maintenance, it's decreasing quite a bit. We really haven't spent a lot of our allocated budget. That was close to $30,000 this past year. Um, we had hoped to get somebody external to help us with property maintenance and it just hasn't come to fruition. What we're going to do is decrease that budget but shift that cost over to the Public Works Department um, so that they can have sort of somebody within their um, staff that's dedicated to property management and sort of returning that back a little bit closer um, to, to smaller numbers um, based on what we've seen before, which was that $18,000, which is where it was at in 21. Uh, I kind of skipped over this one I shouldn't have. Up here in City Hall wages, one of the things we had talked about was um, increasing the amount of part-time administrative staff available to us. Um, Lori is running full tilt. I'm running full tilt. We have projects that we want to do that just aren't getting done. Sarah's got a lot of things in the hopper, but only has a summer intern, and that summer intern gets swallowed up a lot with sidewalks and, and uh, weed commissioner duties. <laughs> Um, and even though we're not going to be doing sidewalks this year, there's a whole host of things that Sarah could have this person running around doing. So what we're, again, thinking about is combining hours that she has booked in her department for that summer intern plus these new hours, which is about $9,000, putting them together and seeing if we can get more year-round support um, for the administrative staff that operates at City Hall. And this is going to be different than the admin assistant who's helping Jody and the utilities with sort of day-to-day -day operations and we'll be pitching in on different projects. This is more higher level sort of thing. So helping with RFPs, maybe helping with finding some policy, draft policies for certain things. Questions so far, John? 
Joel, for Justin and Crystal, this is because they've heard this probably <coughs> times. Okay. John? No? no? Okay. Scoot on to the next part. Uh, back in end here, you will see that our property insurance is going up uh, due to just having, uh, I think it was a, there was an increase in our premiums, plus additional money for City Hall, a new building, $2.7 million, I think is what it was assessed at. Um, tourism dollars are going up, but the amount of income we're getting from moon tax is also going up. And then down there at the bottom, you will see that Community industrial development, we did increase chambers um, contribution by 2,000. Prior to 2021, they were receiving 16,000 from the city. Um, we had geared that down a little bit in, in many ways because we gave them 20,000 extra dollars on top of that in 2020. Um, but I think we're at the point where the budget team felt comfortable trying to get back up to that $16,000 mark eventually but not all in one year. And then donations, it looks a little funky, but last year, specifically with the Smart Bus, we gave $9,000. $3,000 for operating expenses, $6,000 for contribution towards the new electric bus. This year, we're going to drop that because we're not participating in another electrical bus, but we are um, increasing their operating um, budget by 4500 and they had a pretty, pretty compelling argument otherwise for that. Coon Prairie Trail is staying at the exact same at 1700 So ultimately, that's a rundown of the administrative budget. I think for the most part, again, the focus was on keeping good staff, adding some staff capacity, and then just like most departments dealing with inflation um, across a lot of different sectors as well as dealing with the fact that we are just very busy and so chewing up more publishing costs and auditing costs and things like that. So, questions or concerns? The graph. Um. <laughs> Great <the> colors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, just if we want to switch one more, we'll go to, you know, the other expenses used here. It's airport, board of health, taxi cab, and muni court. Muni court voted for no changes uh, at their meeting last Thursday, Lori. Um, airport is changing the most uh, for two reasons. Number one, we're just assuming their fuel expenses are going to go up like everybody else's, so that was kind of a token addition, um, but we did assume that their fuel uh, revenue because they're selling fuel out there is also going to go up so that um, balances out and then some. The liability insurance was a cost that used to just show up as part of the general city property cost but because it showed up as a specific cost. It's for their um, fuel, the fuel underground tanks, especially insurance for the airport. Right. So because it was in, uh, basically an insurance cost that could be easily segregated from the other ones, I said, hey, why not show that against the airport instead of showing that against the general fund? Just a way to make it a little bit more uh, transparent if somebody looks at this. It's like, hey, this is the true cost of running an airport, and so make them carry their insurance. Whereas for the rest of the city, it's not as easily broken out and saying, hey, this is the recreational immunity insurance. It doesn't work like that, right? So, don't know if there's any questions on that. That one's a heck of a lot simpler. Comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Do you need to <coughs> approve it? Yeah, this one we did a little bit differently um, and actually put a request for action on there. Mm -hmm. So, we look at recommending this board to council part of the, the budget that we'll review later tonight. For the draft. I'll make a motion we accept the administrative budget draft, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Okay, thank you. Now, this, did this one we need a... Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll send that over to council tonight. Then we have item number five, which is payment of bills. Well, the regular bills are a lot of it's um, payroll. Um, 
And we're paying Chimney Rock on the second page. It's the third installment of his, of his contract. It's the 7,900 for Chimney Rock appraisal. Um, I believe his contract, if when we were looking at the budget on that, that it goes through 2023. So it'll be the same again next year. So pay it in thirds. Um, if you'll see on page three, we did pay Brickle Brothers for that pay request number 12 that went through council last, um, last time. Um, we're paying on page five, we're paying the $1,500 to Keller Incorporated. That's for the public works um, study or whatever on the building. And then on page six, you know, we had a question on Strand Associates, Main Street Bike and Pedestrian for 374917. Do you have an explanation on that one? Yeah, it's just for our CAP program. The way that, like the Main Street CAP program, we, there was some confusion about whether it's the planning grant one. That's just how the DOT has allotted that project. I never complained to them about it because I didn't want to rock the boat. Right. <laughs> but I said to Sarah, like, if it wasn't for the fact that you are in the initial steps of a project that's specifically for bike and pedestrian planning, it would have thrown me off. A little, it's a little bit of a, minutes, a misnomer. A bit. Anyway. We don't want to let them go. <laughs> All I have for the originals, unless you have more questions. And then in the additionals, uh, let's see. Biggest ones is the um, Vanderwall and Associates for the 4150. Um, this is the, the Main Street traffic study. Yeah, so... The Vandewall and Associates helped us with a planning study as part of the Main Street. For those of you who remember, it's been a, it's been a while. Uh, they submitted uh, a revised report to Sarah and I back in April. <laughs> and uh, let's just say Sarah and I got busy, uh, forgot to follow with them and say, yep, this is a really solid revised report. They send us a bill in June, and then it's just like they brought it up again. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we should. They probably pay that. Um, so what it is is it's the remainder of the base amount for that contract, which was twenty five thousand dollars, and so that forty one fifty is the remainder on that contract. And um, Sarah and I reviewed the report again, and at some point we'll bring it forward to to Public Works probably to just to see you know or, or at least make sure it gets sent out for everybody's records and, and future reference. But at this point, certainly should get it paid. And then the last thing, um, there will be some adjustments to some accounts on the Mathy construction. This is the Arena Drive um, project. I put it all into TID 7, but it's actually being split up between TID 6, TID 7, and then the LRIP grant. And so it's actually because the LRIP money will come in as a revenue, we're going to be putting it into the Public Works Construction Capital account to offset that, just Great. so you're aware of that. No. <laughs> so it doesn't really offset it. No, but it offsets the uh, it offsets the expense. I, I know how that works. I just always just like I have to put it in an inter intergovernmental revenue. revenue. Sorry. <laughs> it just goes in the So yeah, so so forty thousand of it'll go into TID six, sixty thousand, six fifty four will be in TID seven, and the eighteen thousand nine ninety two, which is the amount of the L RIP grant, will go in that construction account. So so what you see there, those accounts will change. That's all I got. I just, I wondered, what are we posting on Indeed for? What? That was going back to our um, administrative assistant okay. position. Okay. And this, that's 50% of it. The other 50% the utilities are paying for. Since she's okay. For, so. And pavement marking on page two for almost $9,000. What was? Yeah, we just never got the bill when they did okay. the Main Street. So okay. I actually emailed them and like, are you paying us? And they said, well, actually, we just, we're going to send it. And they literally sent it like, yes, how are they? Okay. All right. And make sure we don't get too much of a rush right at the end of the year for yeah. the clerks. They love that. <laughs> we're in the midnight oil. Yeah. yeah. Hey, any questions at all for anybody? Mm -hmm. No? Then we'd be looking for a motion to pay the bills. So moved. Second it. Thanks, you guys. Tonight you're doing all the work. <laughs>
Okay. Um, motion and second in place. All those in. Oh no, we need to do that. Oh, you're almost getting almost carried away. You <laughs> almost had a perfect meeting. Uh, John. Hi. Joe. Hi. And Crystal. Hi. All right. Second period for public comment. Anybody? Oh. All right. Then we would be looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 